Many thanks to my awesome supporters and tool partners and introducing my newest sticker buddy, Robert Morris. Robert, if you can, please get in contact with me so I can get your mailing address. I would appreciate it very much. Making turntable legs in SketchUp? Well, first time for everything on this channel. That's right, you heard me. We are going to make turntable legs in SketchUp. So we're basically taking SketchUp and turning it into a lathe to make some really cool legs. Simple, but uh, sometimes can be a little confusing if you're seeing it done for the first time. So if you haven't done so already, check back on my prior videos starting from lesson one if you're unfamiliar with SketchUp or just kind of find your medium uh, halfway through the tutorials and just kind of get a feel for how this is going to work. We're going to be using the follow me tool and creating a two-dimensional profile of the leg before we finalize everything about the leg. And then you'll be able to make cool tables with your turned leg. And I recommend that after you make this, be sure and save it. So that way you can come back to it later and put it into any kind of SketchUp model that you want or use it as a template to make any other legs. So if this is your first time here, I want to welcome you. Please, if you like videos like this or build videos, be sure and click that subscribe button. Don't forget that bell notification that will tell you anytime I upload new content. So let me take you into the computer now. Okay, what we are going to attempt to do, like I said before, is to make a turned leg. So like before, when we made the sphere, we're turning SketchUp into a lathe. Now these turned legs aren't exactly uh, super easy for the beginner, um, but if you go through all of my videos that I can link in the description, as well as some cards throughout the video, uh, going from lesson one to now, you should be able to get this done. Um, the layout might be a little confusing, but I'll try and go through it as best I can. But what we're going to do is try and replicate this leg. Um, may not be exact, but we'll try and make it close. So um, what I'm going to first do is try and copy this leg itself. Um, so I'm just going to move it out here to where I can just kind of play around with it. So let's measure out how tall this thing was. If I have a feeling it was like 29 and a quarter. Yep, 29 and a quarter. Um, so what we're going to start out with is I'm going to make a reference line that's 29.25 inches tall from this red line. So now it's 25, or excuse me, 29 and a quarter from that red line. And the top that you see right here is a three by three square. So I'm going to lay out by turning on my protractor. I'm just going to pick a random spot here on this dotted line and draw a perpendicular 90 degree line there. So this will give me some reference to make my three inch square. So I'll go over with my tape measure three inches over here and let's draw three inches over here. Let me make sure that's all in the same plane. Yep. So now this little square right here is three inches square. I'm gonna double check, cause it looks funny. Three, three, yep, okay. So let me just draw a rectangle first. And let's push and pull it down. Um, let's measure how far this was. This is all arbitrary, you can make this however you like. Holding my shift key down, I can reference. Okay, it's four and a quarter inches long. And like I said, it's just arbitrary. So let's push and pull 4.25 down. And that will be the square top. So now we're gonna kind of build off of that. So I want to find the exact center of this. So I can start using my tape measure tool and draw an X from corner to corner and that will give me the exact center. Now if it's 29 and a quarter minus four and a quarter, so the remainder length is 25 inches long from the bottom of this square. So I'm going to turn my line function on and draw on the blue axis, just make sure it's it's there. 
Now since I've got a leg, I can hold my shift key down and you can see it changes the color of my blue line and I can just come over here to the bottom of my leg and just reference off of that and as you can see in the bottom right hand corner it says 25 inches so I could just do that but if you don't have a leg to reference of course type in 25 and enter okay now from the center of this line we need a circle like this because we're going to use the follow me tool to make this leg um, so from the very bottom of that line, the way the circle works is it does radius. Uh, so it will measure from the center and out. Uh, so you can actually hold right at the end of that line, click it and make sure it's on the blue axis and type in 0.25, which is a half inch radius or half inch diameter. And that will give me the circle I need like this one. Um, let me check and see if this one's different. It might be a one inch diameter. It certainly is. So let's change that. Hit control Z, go back to my circle and a one inch diameter would be a 0.5 radius. There we go. That's a little better. Looks a little more <laughs> like this. Now I haven't done this in quite a while. Um, I made this this SketchUp model uh, probably about a year ago, so maybe six months ago. I, I don't know exactly. I was just playing around with trying to make turned legs. <laughs> so trying to figure out how to make the square part against the circle part, that was hard too. Um, so let's do some layout. We're going to use our tape measure tool, and I'm going to just reference from this red line, but I'm going to hover over that line. So I really don't care how far up it is. I'm just going to hold it right at the tip of that line that I've got. And that way I have a baseline reference to utilize. So I started from the red and then I just kind of hovered over this line and went down to the very tip and snapped it to that point and dropped it. So now that is the very baseline that I need to go with. So what I'm going to attempt to do is lay out lines for the top of this taper right here and then uh, start laying out some curves for these two, um, two little beads right there. And as you can see, they're at the top and the bottom. So this particular taper is about three inches. So from my baseline, I'm going to go, oops, I need, Right there, there we go. Three inches up. Then the beads are going to be, let's just do quarter inch beads. So 0.25, then I'll put an eighth inch between the two. So one slash eight. And then I'll go up again to a quarter, 0.25. And then the rest of it will be the um, little curved out taper right there up to the next set of beads. Um, so we can lay out lines from the bottom of the square. So an eighth inch gap, then a quarter, then an eighth inch, then a quarter. Uh, so let's do that real quick. Forgive the train in the background, y'all. I'm sorry about that. Um, so again, I'm going to establish a line. I'm going to get rid of this X. I don't need it, so I'm just going to click on these lines and hit backspace or delete. And I'm going to turn my tape measure function on and I'm going to just start from this line and then hover over my point right here and snap that right there. And then I'm going to go down on the blue axis, 1 slash 8. That's the distance between. Then come down again at 0.25, another eighth inch space between the two beads and then 0.25 again and then the rest uh, will be the taper. Um, let's go ahead and put an eighth inch space between where the actual uh, curvature starts and where the bead starts. That's what that line is right there. That's another, another gap uh, just like this one. Let me go down here and do the exact same thing on the bottom because right after the bead, I'm going to need that eighth inch 
space. All right. So now, um, I don't want to exceed this three inch square. So let's come to this side and drop a guideline right in the center of that. And I'll do the same thing here. This will kind of give me some guide rails uh, that I don't want to exceed. Now I know this is looking really messy with all of these guidelines, but trust me, they will help. So as you can see, you know what? Let me just get rid of this one. This is that front line I just made. Because I'm only doing this in a two-dimensional way, so the guidelines will really help establish where everything needs to be lined out. So we'll start here at the bottom, and I'll make my taper. So let's just do a five degree taper and we can use my um, compass to do that. And right now you see that it's on the blue axis, uh, which goes outward, left to right or right to left or whatever. I need to change it so I can go up the leg. And you do that by clicking or tapping your cursor keys, like up, down, left, right on your keyboard. And you can see that it changes the direction that the lines are going to go. So in this case, uh, I want the green because that's facing me. So I'm going to click, come up here to just this line on the blue axis, and then I'm going to draw out, let's do five degrees. So I'll just type, type in five and enter. And that will give me the direction of the taper. So using my line tool, go to that endpoint and draw a line to the first area right there. And I just noticed, I don't think I have an eighth inch gap between the two. Let me draw an eighth inch gap, one slash eight. There we go, and let me do this line one more time. I just deleted it and draw it to the eighth inch gap. There we go. Now, um, I can draw a straight up line. Let me zoom in to where I can see this better. And it's on the blue axis, that's good. So that is straight up and down perpendicular. So that is my first eighth inch gap between the bead. So this area right here should be my next uh, line to make, which is going to be my bead. Once we establish this one, we can just copy it and then bring it up a little bit higher let me get a straight up and down guideline that I can use. I can just pop it right there. So this is my perpendicular line. This is my taper line. This is my do not exceed line, okay? So let's do the two point arc and I can go to the end of my eighth inch gap and up to my first line right there and pop it and draw an eighth inch radius and then draw another line right there and then again I'll just copy this one so hit option after it's highlighted and you can copy it up I can even copy this line right here if I want to and copy it up okay now that I have these made let's come up here and if you look I've got guidelines this is the straight up and down but that was for the lower half so I don't necessarily need it anymore I can get rid of it it's going to be in a different position up here at the top because it's a tapered leg so it's going to get wider up here so we can make the beads even with the side here if we want or we can push it in and I'm probably gonna push it in about um, a quarter of an inch. So we'll go in 0.25. So that'll be my straight line that uh, I can't exceed now. And I will pop that line out. Okay? So the taper cannot exceed past this line and neither can my beads up here at the top. So I've already got layout lines. So let's go back to the bottom and we'll just copy all of that went out a little far. 
So by holding my shift key, I'm first going to click on that line. Now holding shift, let's click the uh, bead, that line, this bead, and the other line that you can barely see. Come on, where you at? There we go. Now I'm gonna hold right down here at the very bottom. Actually, let's do the top, that way we can just snap it to the block up there. So hit option and press, and now we've copied that whole profile. Now I'm going to click my orbit tool. Now it's disappeared, that's okay. It'll come back when I go back into the move tool. And let's move up here to the top, get where I can see the line I need to snap to, and it's going to be that point right there. I'm gonna turn move back on, and there's my profile once again, and I'll just snap it right there. There we go. Now all we have to do is create that outer curve that goes down to the base of those other two profiles. And you can kind of see it starting to take shape in a two-dimensional space. So let's do the two-point arc one more time. There we go. And I will snap that point right there, back out a little bit. Come down here to this point. Right there. Now I have an arc. You can kind of see that it's going to that area. Let's see what that looks like. This is my point that I cannot exceed right here. That was my straight up and down line. So that should be even with the two beads at the top of the leg. So it's snapping to that line, which uh, should be even with the beads. So I'm going to click it right there. And now let's take a look at it. So in a two dimensional space, it looks like we have it made. Now it's not quite exact to this. I think I actually made the beads a little more narrower than I did this uh, outer curve right here. So that's why it looks a little more beefy. Uh, this is mainly just a straight taper with a slight curve. So um, it's all in how you want it to look. Just choose how you like and, and then go with it. All right, so now we've got our two dimensional layout. I need to connect this line right here now. So once you connect all the lines you just made, you should have a two dimensional um, one half of the leg, okay? So highlight the circle, that's the direction you want this profile to follow. So then turn on your follow me function and hit that face right there and it will make your leg. So there it is. That is how you make a turned leg with a square top. And then you can go as far as uh, chamfering the corners, just make you a little 45 degree angle connector line. Just I'll demonstrate one, just draw you a simple line like that and then push and pull it down like that and you can create the chamfers. So that about wraps it up. I hope you guys got some information from this particular tutorial. Like I said, it was a little confusing with all of those guidelines everywhere. Um, but if you can keep it straight in your head of how you're wanting it laid out, sometimes those guidelines will start to blend together into a way that allows you to visualize your leg and you can change them at will. So that's it guys, hope you liked it. And if you have any comments, tips, or suggestions, drop them down below, I would love to hear them. Talk at you later, see you on the next video. Don't forget, check out my other videos right over there and click the subscription button, boom!